Welcome to the Goose One channel. The first track on an album can be one of the most crucial parts of the entire project. Not only do you have to catch the listener's attention quickly, grab them by the nuts per se, and make them want to continue, but you also need to set the tone for the rest of the record. Prepare the listener for the sounds, the themes, or whatever else the main focus of the record is. It's a weighty little track, a single song to set expectations high and also grab a listener among a veritable list of other responsibilities. And that's why really good openers stand out to me so much. The first song that came to mind when I came up with this concept is Cutting My Fingers Off, off of Turnover's seminal 2015 record, Peripheral Vision. <laughs> My friends who actually like know this record aren't the biggest fans of it, and I get it. It can be quite samey, a bit of a snooze fest. But for me, it strikes this perfect vibe that at the right time just hits me right where I need it. It's an incredibly mellow record, one that stays sonically pretty low to the ground but emotionally high in the sky. Slower than emo, softer than shoegaze, but still more energetic than slowcore. This isn't my bloody Valentine, but it's not Sign Crush's Motorist either. The washed out guitar tones and reverbed vocals can make much of the record flow together as if it's one large song. And that's what makes Cutting My Fingers Off such a good opener. It pulls out all the same tricks that the rest of the record will continue to use, making it a great tone setter. The guitars playing arpeggiated riffs throughout, the surprisingly catchy vocal melodies, and the personal lyrics all come back to varying degrees. But Cutting My Fingers Off is special. The chorus itself is already a great example. Simple imagery. Is accentuated and rendered more cutting by the amazing chorus melody and the absolute jungle of reverb it's buried in. Much of the record will repeat this simple formula, but something about this opening track just feels special. In 2022, former YouTube rapper and current reoccurring Hivemind guest Quadeca would release what is to me his best record up until now, and one of my favorite records of all time. I didn't mean to haunt you as an absolute tour the force of emotional damage, processing grief through the perspective of the ghost, an almost Murakami-esque premise if you ask me, is performed without a lick of sarcasm, aside from the jokes and tell me a joke. Almost every track has this strange feeling to it, like the instrumentation isn't sure whether to be orchestral, electronic, or folk. Like the very music itself is stuck between being disconnected or close to the listener, like a ghost clinging on to its lingering mortality. And Sorry For Dying is the perfect track to set this tone. It starts with this beautiful orchestral crescendo, strings bubbling under this low pass filter accented with these ethereal synths. The soundscape keeps building and building before collapsing and leaving us with only a piano and Ben's vocals. And once again, the atmosphere is almost heavenly. And that's one thing this record does like almost no other. Atmosphere. Sorry for Dying also introduces us to the record's writing style. This first verse of the record begins the story of Quadeca's ghost, transcribing his insecurities about death and legacy in a beautifully succinct way. Interlaced imagery with visual depictions of his actual death, we see Ben grapple with what life means in the face of death, and if it means anything at all. And that is really the main thesis statement of the record. Legacy after death, how your memory persists after you're gone, in tangible ways as well as more metaphysical ones. And in a similar vein, although in a completely different direction, we have one of the best pop punk albums of all time. The Wonder Years' a seminal 2011 record, Suburbia I've Given You All and Now I'm Nothing. Suburbia is an album all about one thing, growing up. 
I think to a certain degree, Supi and Ko's previous record, The Upsides, could be described in a similar manner. But while that aforementioned album is about the prospect of growing up and into your own person, Suburbia is about being in the middle of that process and looking back. And nothing exemplifies that theme better than the opening track came out swinging. The simple octave chord riff is one of the most recognizable and iconic guitar parts in modern pop punk and maybe all of the genre. It builds for a long, feeling amount of time with a driving drum part and a looping vocal sample that's chopped up in a really cool way. It keeps going and going and going and going until... Moved all my shit to my parents' basement! The transition from that intro into this first verse is explosive. Now that's a word I'd use to describe most of the Wonder Years upside slash suburbia era. Explosive and confessional. Soupy's scratchy vocals deliver stories of endless touring like an old friend telling you about his band, but the lyrics create this really imaginative imagery. On top of that, the track has an insane amount of energy. It's completely selling the feeling of being at a punk show to the listener, while the slower moments like the chorus and the bridge portray those quieter bits. The moments when you're tired and need to take a break. It's about growing up in that environment, growing tired of it in a way while still loving it. In a sense, it's portraying the scene in the same way that most pop punk portrays hometowns. And in many ways, that's the foundational concept that all of Suburbia is built upon. Growing up uncertain of where you're going and who you're turning into. Themes like this are built upon later in tracks like Woke Up Older and Coffee Eyes, while the rest of the album explores the ways the passing of time changes others and everything else around you. In many ways, the opener from their last album, My Last Semester, pulls a lot of the same tricks. And while sure, I'm not sad anymore was an instantly iconic line, I don't think the full track stacks up to the rest of the album. Tracks like Logan's Circle and Melrose Diner outclass the track in a lot of ways, and I just don't think it's as iconic of an opening track as it came out swinging is. No, it would take the band until their 2013 album The Greatest Generation to truly perfect the opening track. You're just trying to read But I'm always standing There There sets the mood for the rest of the album perfectly. Suburbia was reflective, it was insecure, but it was hopeful. Greatest Generation is sad and it's scared. Sufi has his heart strung up on a clothing line and he's sorry he doesn't laugh at the right times. And this record is all about that. Compared to Suburbia, Generation is a lot more emotionally vulnerable. And so, There There follows suit, letting us in on Soupy's insecurities and his feelings of inadequacy. His outsider qualities that he previously described as a strong suit in tracks like My Last Semester are mined for their downsides, and questioned more thoroughly. The track is also considerably slower paced than came out swinging is, introducing us to a more methodical, less pop-punky sound of the record. And that's mostly it. There's plenty more records I would love to talk about in this video, and I might in an eventual part two, but for now, I think this is enough. If any of these albums sounded interesting to you, please do check them out. I absolutely love all the records I mentioned in this video and wholeheartedly recommend all of them. With that out the way, I am the Goose Fun Channel and I'll see you guys in the next video.